So B pollen has been getting a ton of attention over on TikTok lately. This yellow stuff is the most powerful thing you can consume in your entire life. And if you do, it is radically going to change your health. That stuff, it's bee pollen. Now I can always tell when a supplement is going viral over on TikTok because I start getting super random messages about super random supplements and bee pollen is no difference here. Now the primary questions that I tend to get are surrounding the effects of bee pollen on testosterone production and fertility. And so in this video, we're gonna take a super deep dive into the research surrounding the effects of bee pollen on fertility and testosterone. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, when you look at bee pollen as a substance, it's essentially a complex combination of pollen, flower nectar, small amounts of honey, as well as bee saliva. And bees use bee pollen primarily as a food source, similar to how they use things like honey. Now, the main difference between bee pollen and honey is that honey is primarily just simply a source of carbohydrates for bees, whereas bee pollen is a little bit different in that it's primarily used as a source of protein as well as vitamins and minerals. Now, when you look at bee pollen, unlike honey, it also has a complex composition of carbohydrates, proteins, amino acids, lipids, phenols, as well as vitamins and minerals. And on a per weight basis, bee pollen does appear to have a fairly respectable amount of nutrients in it. However, there is one thing to point out here, and that is that uh, bee pollen is specifically meant for bee consumption, not human consumption. And the reason this is a big deal is that the average human is roughly 600,000 times larger than the average average bee, which means that the average human would have to consume hundreds and hundreds of grams of bee pollen in order to consume a even just a moderate amount of nutrients from bee pollen. However, with that being said, the nutrient content of bee pollen isn't the only reason that bee pollen has been gaining in popularity. People also tend to use it for allergy relief, to increase energy levels, to reduce inflammation, to improve immune function, as well as improve digestive health and increase antioxidants capacity. Now, there is a varying level of evidence to support each of these health claims surrounding bee pollen. However, again, the main things that I want to focus on in this video are the supposed effects of bee pollen on fertility and testosterone levels. Now, if you're wanting to experiment using something like bee pollen or really any supplement for that matter for the purpose of increasing testosterone levels, one of the most practical things that you can do before you start that experimentation is to simply get your testosterone tested. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this, if not the easiest way to do this, is with our video sponsor today, Let's Get Checked. Now, Let's Get Checked has an absolutely awesome at-home testosterone test where uh, they actually send you your test directly to your doorstep where you collect your sample at home, you send it back to them, and then you actually get your results through their online portal within a few days. And so if you're interested in seeing where your testosterone levels are, and implementing a protocol to naturally increase your testosterone levels. Getting tested is extremely helpful, so I would highly recommend checking out my friends over at Let's Get Checked. Uh, and they're currently offering you guys a 25% off discount off of your test. And so uh, make sure to check out the description down below for a link uh, to purchase a test. And if you're interested in getting your results personally analyzed by myself so that we can develop a personal protocol for your personal hormone profile, uh, make sure to check out the link down in the description for that as well. Now, when you look at the research concerning the effects of bee pollen on fertility and testosterone, uh, the main thing to point out here is that there is absolutely zero clinical research on the effects of bee pollen on testicular function in humans. This means that all of the available data, and there is a fair amount of it, has all been performed in rodents, whether that be rats, mice, or rabbits. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is that yes, rodents have obviously different metabolisms and different body sizes than humans, but they also have a completely different native eating pattern. Uh, Rodents are completely adapted to obtaining all of their nutrients through uh, plant foods, whereas humans are not. And so you would expect there to be some level of difference between how a rodent responds to a food product compared to how a human responds to a food product. And I don't think this difference can be overlooked. And so I did want 
to note this as we uh, go ahead and dive into the research on the effects of bee pollen on fertility. Now, in this first study that we're going to be looking at here uh, that was performed in healthy rodents, the researchers concluded that, quote, there were increases in testosterone levels, sperm counts, and daily sperm production of rats fed with pollen. There were no significant changes in absolute weights except in prostate weights. Also, there were no changes in relative testes, prostate, or seminal vesicle weights of rats fed on pollen, but relative epididymis weights of rats in pollen groups decreased. The results of this study show that bee pollen caused an increase in testosterone levels and sperm counts of male rats we suggest that bee pollen has an androgenic effect. And then in this study that was performed in rats that had chemically induced testicular damage, the researchers concluded that, quote, our results suggest that bee pollen has a healing effect on reproductive parameters in testicular damage caused by MTX. And then in this study performed in rodents with chemically induced diabetes, the researchers found that, quote, it can be concluded that bee pollen suspensions may have potential protective roles against diabetes-induced pituitary testicular axis dysfunction and testicular histological deleterious changes. And in another study performed in rabbits, the researchers found that, quote, bee pollen at 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight significantly improved semen quality increased fertility percentage, and improved biochemical profiles of the blood. And so as you can see, bee pollen does in fact appear to be extremely promising at improving fertility markers in rodents. But obviously the real question here is whether or not you would actually see the same things or the same results in humans. And to evaluate this question, it's largely just speculation, but you kind of have to look at the mechanisms and see are the mechanisms of action that are apparent in rodents, would they carry over into humans? And so to investigate this, I want to reference this study here where the researchers concluded that there are numerous significant ameliorative effects for several male reproductive impairments with the treatment of various bee products, especially in animals. But in general, these treatments have not been proven to be effective and safe in clinical experiments. The various extracts of bee products have shown functional biological properties due to their high content of flavonoids, polyphenols, and radical scavenging capacity as summarized in figure two. And so what appears to be going on here is that because of the extremely high polyphenol content of uh, bee pollen, that there does appear to be some fairly high antioxidant properties that can reduce oxidative stress in the testes and therefore improve fertility markers. Now, again, the question is whether or not you would actually see this in humans. And again, this is largely speculative, but I would expect to see similar results in human clinical trials. If a male is experiencing high testicular oxidative stress, consuming something that is high in polyphenols can help to reduce that oxidative stress in the testes and therefore improve fertility markers and semen parameters. But it's worth pointing out here that this is not unique to bee pollen. Pretty much any plant food um, that is high in polyphenols has antioxidant properties to it. And so though bee pollen does appear to have some fairly respectable polyphenol content, it's, um, it's nothing remarkable in comparison to some other plant foods, things like uh, blueberries and elderberries and green tea and things of that nature. But I also want to point out here again that there is a major difference between rodents and humans when it comes to dietary needs. Rodents have to consume plant foods, things like bee pollen, in order to increase antioxidant um, capacity in their bodies, whereas humans do not. Humans are far more adaptive to consuming uh, nutrients through meat products in order to meet their antioxidant needs. And now these would be nutrients like taurine, carnitine, carnosine, creatine, CoQ10, cysteine, glycine, vitamin A, zinc, selenium, copper, you name it. These are all nutrients that humans are actually adapted to consuming through meat products that rodents are not adapted to consuming. And all of these nutrients that I just listed have far more evidence to support their ability to increase antioxidant capacity in the human body when compared to things like bee pollen. And specifically when it comes to fertility, there is 
a ton of clinical research on things like L-carnitine for the purpose of specifically reducing testicular oxidation and improving fertility. And so even though bee pollen does appear to have some respectable research in rodents, there are other compounds that are far more potent and far more proven when it comes to clinical research when compared to bee pollen. And then on top of all of this, there is a fair amount of evidence to suggest that polyphenols might actually have some detrimental effects as well. There are a handful of clinical trials uh, that do seem to suggest that uh, polyphenols may reduce the effectiveness of recovery from exercise as well as have some direct anti-androgenic effects either through directly blocking the androgen receptor or preventing the conversion of testosterone into DHT. And you do appear to see this actually in the clinical trials on bee pollen. There's only a few clinical trials on the effects of bee pollen on men's health and they do appear to show a direct anti-androgenic effect as opposed to the androgenic effect that you see in rodents, which does seem to uh, demonstrate that there is a difference between how humans and rodents respond to bee pollen. Now, aside from the effects that bee pollen might have on fertility, there's also a fair amount of rodent research to suggest that it may also have an effect on testosterone as well. Now, in this study performed in mice with chemically induced testicular injuries, the researchers found, quote, a significant increase in luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and testosterone levels in the serum and semen parameters in the groups treated with bee pollen. And in this study performed in rodents with diabetes-induced hypogonadism, the researchers found that, quote, the administration of bee pollen resulted in a significant recovery of the above-mentioned parameters as compared to the diabetic control groups, the above-mentioned parameters being testosterone levels. Now, again, the mechanisms of action here appear to be the antioxidant properties of bee pollen, uh, the ability of bee pollen to reduce oxidative stress in the testes and therefore uh, improve uh, testicular function as well as testosterone production. However, there are a couple of things to point out here. And one is that both of these studies were essentially performed in sick rodents, rodents that have had chemically induced hypogonadism. And so there's absolutely zero indication that these same results would carry over over into healthy rodents, much less healthy adult males. And then the second thing to note is that if you are a rodent or a male who's experiencing uh, chemically induced hypogonadism, the best thing to do is not to take a polyphenol supplement or an antioxidant supplement, but it's to avoid the chemicals that are causing the hypogonadism. And so the practical use case for bee pollen, I just don't think is there, especially when it comes to testosterone production. There are other supplements that are far more proven, not just in clinical trials, but in rodents when it comes to increasing testosterone production. And so again, even though it has a respectable polyphenol um, uh, content and a a respectable antioxidant content, there's still other compounds and nutrients from just food that are far more proven and effective for the purpose of improving uh, testicular function through improving oxidative stress. Now, when it comes to nutrients that can actually increase testosterone and actually improve fertility in humans, there is actually an entire list of, of nutrients that have been shown to actually be able to do this. And these would include things Things like vitamin D, zinc, folic acid, selenium, magnesium, vitamin E, vitamin B12, calcium, L-arginine, L-carnitine, L-lysine, diaspartic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, coenzyme Q10, and cysteine. All of these nutrients have actual clinical research behind their ability to improve fertility and increase testosterone production in men. And so again, if you are looking for something to increase testosterone production, simply eat foods that are high in these nutrients. But other than that, guys, make sure to check out the description down below for 25% off of an at-home testosterone test, as well as a link to get your results personally analyzed by myself. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.